of Alliances, the Blood family, has been betrayed by the Dragon family. This was, in my opinion, the most ironclad alliance that has probably ever been formed in the game Call of Dragons. And okay, I get the game has not been out very long, but stick around in this video for the full details. The details that I didn't even want to have to share. I didn't want to have to make this video. Jesus, there's drama. Obviously, there's drama. So, I'm going to put my two cents in. I don't really do these types of videos. As you guys know, we don't really tip our toes into server drama. But, we kind of have to cover what's been going on here. Because you guys know, we have been following server 32 with the live streams been watching those fights and this video honestly shines a lot of light in to what was happening especially when we go into the game and look at what we know and then cross-reference it from what chisco is going to give us so stay tuned for this absolute jam-packed episode with a lot of drama and obviously my thoughts on Server 32 and the DA BDO family betrayal. Hello everyone. So yes, we're here on um, watching Chisgo. And obviously Chisgo is going into all of the nitty gritty. And if you want to know all the full information, honestly guys, there will be a little info card above with Chisgo's main video out. Check it out. I had his blessing. Thank you, Chisgo, for letting me to do a little quick reaction and obviously using your video for reference. So basically, this is kind of crazy, right? This is one of the biggest, insanest betrayals that honestly has happened in the in the game like it's just flat out insane and when we look into the whole afrian region here we're gonna basically break down what i know of the game from when we were watching all of this you know unfold because we were confused right because we were playing and watching the live stream and when you was watching the live stream with me You'd have noticed like there were certain times we were discussing certain things. There were certain times when we were kind of stumped, if you want to say, on, you know, what was going on. So if we go and boot up live draw, we're going to just discuss in the early game the, the map. Because the map here is what was a bit confusing. Because for me... In this whole situation, and this is before we go into any of the information that Chisgo is going to go into and, you know, talk about, right? Because we need to go into a few little points in this video and it will make our story make a lot more sense. So when we go into live draw here, live draw is going to basically show us when we are, you know, discussing the map. So when we look at the Rise of Kingdoms map, especially in this bottom zone we originally watched as you guys know the big fight right we watched the original sort of like fight where they were fighting down here the bdo bdm alliance and then from this side you kind of had the nvnk guys so this was the kind of like the beginning server right this is when they were in the so frosty as you can see a burning lungs and they were fighting in Caltea, right so we knew we were watching this this was a really cool fight honestly we had a blast watching this but behind the scenes, there was a lot more things going on, right? And the weird thing is, the further into the season this progressed, the more and more weirder it just became, right? Because we knew these guys were fighting here, and the next minute, from out of nowhere, I got told they're fighting in Forgotten Lands. And this is what kind of blew my mind, because they wanted to fight in Lorcan and, and Forgotten Lands, the BDR and... And Dragon Alliance, but it didn't make sense to me because obviously me and anyone who's been playing for such a long time knows, well, these guys are in Sofrostia and they're fighting in Kaltia, so surely they're just gonna be going into Hollandale and, and in, right? Because it, it just makes sense when you just go in bish bash bosh, right? But this is where a bit of the context when it comes to the video from Chisgo. So what we're gonna do is go in, we're gonna to react to a bit more of the information that it discusses in the opening and we're gonna skip through a little bit and go into some more of the story that what he un unfolds because the more and more 
he tells, the more and more from me, it makes sense what's happened. And I'm not even going to discuss yet the zone, the final zone. The final zone was just a, 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 just a cluster a mess, right? It was just a mess, right? It was just chaos. And I'm not going to lie, it was, it just blew my mind what happened, right? Because even us watching the stream couldn't believe what we was witnessing because we were technically witnessing live the full betrayal of this server. So what was the betrayal? What was everyone, you know, discussing? And if you go over into, again, the, the video now, we're gonna now make a bit more sense. So if we let Chiz go tell you guys a little bit more about this information, again, check him out, guys. You know Mr. Chiz go if you haven't. If you haven't heard of him, I don't know where you've been living, guys. Honestly, he's the number one content creator for Rise of Kingdoms. So check him out. He's amazing. Top guy, honestly. So let's go and see what he has to say about the agreement. Because once we know about that agreement, it will make a mo lot more sense. It is true. I spent days, if not weeks, in conversations trying to avoid making this very video, trying to be a diplomat and solve these problems without having to actually share with the world the messy underbelly of what Dragon has done this season. And they won't even give an explanation of why they feel the way they feel. They're just sort of saying, you should know what's wrong. How could you not? <laughs> well, we, we tried to resolve it. And then I love this, by the way. This bit makes me laugh because it's so true, man. I have dealt with people like this where you're like, okay, there's a problem. Tell me what the problem is and, and we can work together. We can figure out the problem. And then like, you know what the problem is. You cause the problem. If you cause the problem, you should know what the problem is. And you're like, wait, what, what do you mean? Like, I'm, I'm trying to communicate with you. And instead of communicating, there's friction. And if it's friction, there's problems already, right? So what we do now, it obviously will, if you want to check out the full video, check out the full video. But this is where things are getting a bit more interesting, right? So this is where we look in and basically, Chiz goal here is starting to discuss and tell you and explain how basically the BD and Dragon family speaking with Sean here, who is again the number one player in the server. So if we just jump over into server 32 quickly, check out the rankings of the server, right? It was this number one player. This, I believe, this is Sean. I could be wrong. Someone in the comments. If I'm wrong, let me know. Obviously, you can blast me, but I'm pretty certain my, my information's right. But I'm sure this is Sean, right? This is the guy that basically Chisgo has actually a really good, you know, friendship with. They've got a good relationship. They've been talking, offered on. They like each other, basically. Like, they're good friends. Like, they, they, they can work together. And during now the, the, the video, this is when things start, for me sounding a bit weird a line because on what each side was going to be sending to their team well what he basically starts to talk about is basically how both of these families could become one family in the server unify the server basically and you know when there's a future kvk so for example if server 32 fought my server in server 2 basically the dragon family and bdo family would work together destroy server 2 win and share out the rewards right they'd figure out this way and this is what this whole whole area is talking about it's all about this agreement and you can see plain as day here honestly plain as day the agreement, this is what was agreed. It doesn't matter, like even in this season, and whatever has happened, right? The Dragon family and the BD family has an agreement. And this agreement was like, even if they were gonna fight for that center, whoever wins, whoever loses, whatever, this is what the plan is to share the rewards. So in my eyes, and this is what I'm gonna say already, you should be following the agreement because why are you going into the diplomatic talks causing all of this basically like stress if you want to call it stress because you are creating friction because of all the information that's just being dotted about it's just it's just crazy right but when we go a bit further on this is where it goes a bit crazy so as 
if we go into the start of season one, this is only about 12 minutes in the video, you can go again, check out Jizgo's video. He will explain here the start of S1. And when you start hearing what he has to talk about, it makes sense from our perspective, right? Because originally, we just Matter. thought the it first was... Thing we need we just thought it was the BD guys fighting, you know, the NK guys. We thought this is what it were. It was just a, a friendly fight, but there was more to it. So I'm just going to let Chiswell explain it here because it is a little bit easier. And then we're going to skip a bit more forward in the story. And then I'm going to go into some more of my own personal chats with some of the other guys and just basically talk about this whole drama and finish it up with my final thoughts on it, right? So... Mr. Chisgo, what happened in S1? And explain it to everyone To here. talk about with what happened in this season is how it started. Because this season did kick off with a bang. And it really because did. the Dragon family had two or so alliances. And we had, I think at the time, somewhere between four it was and six scary. alliances worth of players. This was, the this was terrifying, their alliance, by the Dragon way. family took one starting zone over here. Like, the BD family is... Terrifying guys. Zones for the blood this. family, which is something that in hindsight, I think we would only take one. And we kind of forced the other three servers to all be in the burning lands, which kind of sucks. And in, again, in hindsight, I think we would, as a blood family, only take one starting zone instead so of lazy, two. You know, they uh, but we the offered faults, the burning lands in like good faith. We were like, the, just you take know, it. The dimension we're not going to fight you for it. Between. And instead of just taking that agreement Vosso. they said you know so what it's Epic, really good to invade see starting at the very start of the game they tried to invade sophrostia um and did so in a sort of underhanded way nothing no, i don't take it personally right but they 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 faked going to one zone and then actually all went into sophrostia we end up beating them so they all end up going to burning lands anyways but i mention that because it starts to build a negative relationship with the other yeah. three servers that were in this map with us because now they kind of don't like us. And it and that is key. That is actually key. Because you've got to think, the way this game is made and the way this game is actually, you know, set out, especially when we zoom out into the zones now, you know, it is almost a survival of the fittest, right? If your server takes up Sephrostia and a random enemy server drops in, yeah, there's going to be fighting. And, the, and to right, BDM destroyed the server that jumped in and pushed them out, right? It, it, it's what you should be doing, right? But as he says, this does now create a bit of a sour taste because obviously now these guys have got a bit of a taste of like, okay, we don't really like what's going on here. How can we potentially solve this? And one of the alliances that was under the phone was NK. And NK, as you guys know, is honestly, I would say the underpin of the whole thing, right? There's a lot more in it. I'm going to let Chisgold's video do the full explanation because I don't want to go, you know, too crazy into it because he has got it all. Just watch his video, guys. Every screenshot, everything. He's got it, right? But now when we go into zone four, this is where, for me, things was getting a bit shady because it didn't make sense to us, right? Because if we were... Um, live streaming when, like we were when we were looking at this zone right we had originally the BDO um, BDM Alliance they were coming down this area right so this was like their zone and they were coming into this like curve and they were following on you know from everyone else and trying to get this curve onto the river at the same time like I say you got the BDM guys they were doing something similar following on pursuit but this is when you could see the betrayal in the Dragon Alliance in full swing, right? This is where everything went kind of like up in air because you had their alliance, which basically moved in here and drew this fort. This fort position is very important because it allows them to refresh very, very quickly in arguably the hardest position in the map, which is this little zone right uh, let's change the color because you can't see it this little zone here this this zone is the most brutal zone in the map and i'm going to sh un show you guys why because once you get to where bdm were on this line the nk alliance now that had a sour taste from s1 that might have been pulling strings who knows right again i let 
Chisgold do all of that because he does honestly the best justice for the story. These guys then now came in and basically fought against them. So now, instead of just being the DS family and the DA family, you had the DS family and the DA family and the NK family, as you can see, all fighting against um, BD. You had three major families from three separate, basically, servers all fighting against, the, um, against them because the NK alliance is basically made up of all these guys that just dis basically just disliked, just don't like the the D, uh, BD guys, which is fine, right? If you don't like some, you don't like some of them. But the way it was all orchestrated is just sour taste, right? And when we go into, like I said, this area now, this is why it was a problem because when we was live streaming, we didn't understand how they were gonna break through it. This, this area of the map was so hard to punch through because you have this river which causes so many frictions on the guys that are building on it as well as when you get to the end of the river you are faced with choke points after choke points here which is just obscene on the side of the defense so these guys da and ds or da you know yeah da and ds as well as nk they already had the upper hand on the map and i'm going to just showcase because i've had some blessings from him some extra screenshots before we end the video on everything to do with this and uh, server 32 but it is mr steel so steel what is a very known player i don't know if you guys might know him from server 4 he was one of the original players in server 4 as well as he is as well a moderator for you guys on your um, Call of Dragons Discord. So what we're going to do is just jump over to the Discord page. And once we do that, I'm going to just showcase me and him talking. We've got his blessing to showcase the conversation. We're just going to show the, uh, just a part basically to do with this map. Because one thing that you guys will know as myself being an official Call of Dragons content creator and an associate level... Um, you can imagine I have quite a lot of in-depth knowledge and so does Steel. And because of this, me, him, Boss Nasty as well, Hunkton Gaming, Chisgull, there's a few other content creators are basically in a small secret group that we basically do very, very in-depth talks. We talk about XP, we talk about numbers all the way. And Steel was discussing the map, right? So what we're going to do is go into Discord, we're going to just quickly bring up that chat and with all that, we're gonna then finish the video on my thoughts on this whole situation in server 32. So here we are. This is the bit of conversation I wanna basically showcase. And this is gonna basically add on to Chisgo's video. Because you guys know if you've watched the video yet, and if you haven't, again, check it out above. But in that video, they talk about the way they had to build and the way they had to get around this problem. And this was the problem here, right? And even Steel thought of the, the this biggest brain plan, which was this AF, right? This AF drop they placed, which jumps the river, gets away from here, because then they can basically have this AF and start building up, right? Very, very clever and very, very abusive as well, right? So obviously, when you look at this, you can see how far with this line is required for that uh, video, right? For, well, for that match or pathway. So here, when we're speaking to Steel, you can see what we're talking about, right? I'm just asking him a question. You know, when we were talking about map changes, and this is me basically speaking to Steel about when we are talking about the zone for map changes in the Call of Dragons Discord, when we are figuring out the map, making it more fairer and balanced for every region, right? Is this what he was talking about, right? Because we knew, I could see months, this is weeks, guys, like, and ahead about this. And he was always worried about this one zone. This one zone was the most worried thing, right? And straight away, he goes, when I wrote it a few days before Z3 opened for us, he goes, I knew the choke would be impossible to push. And this is true, right? We watched this for so long, trying and trying to push through, and they just couldn't. And, they, and it was honestly a shame that they couldn't, right? And I I always want to commend BD 
because they they tried their best. Like you can see here, they he they fought so well strategically on how they was able to basically overcome this hurdle, right? So what we're gonna do is basically just finish out the video here. We're gonna give you my thoughts on the situation because, like I say, I don't really do these type of videos. Honestly, Server Thirty Two has probably just suffered probably one of the biggest blows in history. Um, we honestly see the true colors of Dragon, the Dragon family. I'm not gonna lie. From everything I've watched, everything I've seen so far. It does not look pretty. I'm not happy with the way these guys have ran things. I think the way they've basically backstabbed the BD family is just downright disrespectful because again, BD was always trying to open negotiations respectfully and trying to always resolve an issue, right? To make this server into one of the most powerful servers that will ever exist in the Cove Dragon's history, but Obviously, it looks like the Dragon family might not want the BD family to be a part of that discussion, right? So, it is sad. It's it's just bad taste. I'm not happy. Chisgold knows we've been talking in private chat about the situation. And, and he knows how strongly I felt about it when I was watching the video. So, I just thought, you know, this might be a little bit of a different video you know, it's more of me just speaking my mind on the situation that's happened as well as just kind of giving you guys a bit more on it, you know, since obviously you've got a bit of Steel's conversation there as well to add to it. So I hope you guys have enjoyed it. I know I'm honestly upset with what's happened. I, I do hope the BD family maybe in the future can either, I don't know, they might have a plan, they might migrate out, who knows, they might stay here and try and fight it through. I, whatever they do, honestly, they have my whole respect. The BD family have always been there, honestly, they've been helping me out. Even from the get-go, they've been promoting my videos in their Discord, which is amazing to see. So I've always, always got respect for them. So it's a damn shame, honestly, I'm... It is just speechless to, to say what, what's happened. It's, it is the biggest betrayal that's happened in Call of Dragons history on the scale of how much power and basically money has been spent in this kingdom. And honestly, I hope, I hope nothing like this happens ever again, right? So if you enjoyed today's video and my reaction to the drama and the, the this bad news that's happened in Server 32, Smash like, comment, and subscribe to the channel, guys. I'm here every day trying to give you Coral Dragons content, something new every day, you know, trying to change things up as well. So no matter what, I can provide you something that hopefully, you know, is part of your appreciation, right? So thank you for watching. And with all that, see you later.